Everybody, it's Tyler here at Pikes Peak Signature Event, checking in with 13358C Collision, local team coming out of Longmont here in Colorado. Absolutely phenomenal, an event win so far under their belts, and we got a lot to talk about on this robot that we'll be going through. A lot that's gone into their uh, dry base area as we uh, kind of do a top or a bottom up overview on this. They got a drop in, we've seen so much of the meta change to go that route. It's definitely a great thing to talk about with that team. Uh, wings and hang, and then we dive a little bit into their program, and they're using C++, so we'll hear more about that. So let's learn more about this team collision coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Eric, let's start out with that drive base, talking about the motor config you're doing. I really love to hear you did a full rebuild, so talk to me about any major changes you made, uh, and especially as you're tackling the barrier, what's gone into Yeah, it. all right. So we did a full rebuild because we saw a very important thing was getting over the barrier. So our robot right now is a six blue motor drive. It runs at 450 RPM, and a special thing about it is we use different sizes of wheels. This makes it we have a 3.25 wheel and a 2.75 wheel. This makes it so that we can go over the barrier without getting tipped or stuck. An important thing about this is in the new meta, as we designed this new role, we saw that getting over the barrier is a crucial part of doing this uh, new game and new meta. So another thing important about this is these sleds. These sleds allow us to get over the barrier and get onto the barrier so that this drive can get us over. Another important thing about the drive base is we've seen that in this game, bowling has become a crucial factor in this game. So these wall riders right here allow us to ride on the wall and then uh, get tri balls in without getting stuck on those walls. And this allows us to be fast and consistent about doing anything in this new metagame. Yeah, wall riders are such, like, it's such an easy thing that every team really should be implementing on their robot. Totally. It's crazy that we haven't seen more. A lot of teams we interview, we see them because they're teams that are doing the right thing, yeah, right? Totally. So, but it's so cool to hear with that. Um, you know, looking from earlier this, this year, the way the meta has changed from a drive base in particular is, would you say barrier is the biggest thing in regards to drive base? Yes, probably. So the reason why drive base is so important for the barrier is because you need to be fast to get over because defense has become a very big game a game element now. And because we play, get played defense on, we need to be able to either go over the barrier very fast or go through the zone very fast. So either of these work very well, so you need to be able to do this for the new game. With, with those sleds, are you only going over the barrier like frontwards or like does yeah. your CG allow for both? So our sleds allow us for both. So we have sleds here and sleds gotcha. here. This allows us so if we go and score one into the goal, then we can come back right over and grab another try ball so that we can go and score consistently and fast. Great, so let's talk about this uh, drop and intake uh, that you're doing. You know, this is, once again, this is, I think, spot on with what we've seen with the meta uh, going through, and your team is able to just implement that so well with that bowling strategy. So talk to me about, uh, first off, when did you make these changes for it? How has it been working for your team? Anything that kind of stands out with it? Yeah, so uh, on our first robot, what we had was uh, intake with something on the top, so we could not drop it in. What we had to do was push it up every time, and this led to some inconsistencies. So well, sometimes when we were trying to mash load, it would just fall out, and then we couldn't go and get the easy, um, easy try ball. So but now with the redesign, we can just drop it in, and it's easy in there, and then we can just get it out. And then just go back and forth. And like Eric said with the drive base, because we can go to the barrier, it's really fast. So now with the intake, it's also, we have it, so it's a drop down. So now, because we wanted a longer intake to be able to like help us with the tri ball getting, so we have it to drop down. So during the match, we, or at the start of the match, we have it so it starts like this. And then the intake will run during autonomous. Which you know, run the, and then it will just let it down, which gives us a big advantage on letting us have a longer intake that can really help us get more tri balls. And then another key part of our intake are these circular sleds. A big like problem that we were having was that when we were trying to push the tri balls into the goal, we would get stuck. The goal would hit the wheels, and we would just not be able to push the tri balls in because our intake was just getting stuck on the bar. So these circular sleds help stop us from touching the bar with the wheels. So instead, when we push it in, it just goes up and then it lets it out easily. Optimally from your bowling strategy uh, in a match, how many tri balls are you typically entering in before you start doing that bowling? 
So with bowling, we usually we drop it from here and let it fall down. And we'll usually go two to four, depending on how, or how the opponents are playing. If they're playing heavily defense, we'll only do two. But if they're trying to play like lighter, they're on the other side of the field, we'll just go for the four and then try and get, we'll, most of the time we just get four in and it's really helpful for us. Henry, let's talk about the uh, wings on your robot, and then we'll be going to the climb as well. I think one of the things with your climb is you're so fast with it, is you're able to score tri balls really up until the last minute and get that quick climb for it. But talking about the uh, wings, let's go to that, and then we'll move into the climb itself. Yeah, so we have two sets of wings on our robot. The first set, we have our front wings. These really help for when our opponents are shooting, and we can wedge them under the or over the bar. This allows us to basically eliminate the need of a blocker so we can just push them back over for our teammates to score. And then we also have back wings here that are drop down. We have them triangle reinforced so that way they are like really strong. We can use this to play starvation if we're up on tri balls and we can completely block the opponent's match lid zone without breaking our wings. From a match strategy standpoint, I think some things I've seen in recent SIGs is that they're almost starving the entire match for things. Is that something you might be implementing as well too, especially in playoffs? Um, depending on our teammate, but if our teammate is really good at scoring, we can definitely just starve the opponent and like keep them away from tri balls. So we talked about the side climb, talk to me about your, uh, your other uh, horizontal bar climb and how that works. Yeah, so we went with a four piston uh, crunching. It gets B tier when we crunch, but we can also get a passively A tier when it's up. So if our opponent also has an A tier on the side. One nice thing about this is we can just drive up really quick on the sleds and activate it. It takes less than five seconds from anywhere on the field to do. And this just allows us to score more tri balls than all the hangs that are going onto the top hole. What would you say, like honestly, safely in a match, what is kind of like the last moment, that how many seconds are left until you go to climb typically? I'd say 10 to five, just to be safe. But if I need a, if I need to score more tri balls and we're behind, then I will go for like a five second hang. Grace, I want to wrap up on this one. We don't get a chance to talk enough about programming a lot when we do these interviews. Your team's using C++ for that. Um, tell me about not, not only what you do, but why it's so important uh, for the methods that you're using as well, and what are maybe some things teams can learn from it. Of course. So C++ is a really good programming language because it gives a team a lot of options to be able to just, like, use the different syntaxes and there's a lot of different types of C++ out there. There's VEX implement, implement, implemented ones and then there's also like there's some through like some colleges that you can just download and then it's really easy to just download it and then go online just look up how to do it and you can just learn like different syntaxes and this gives you a big advantage on being able to use those syntaxes to get your code working really well. Some things with C++ that I notice is once you make the function, it's really easy to use them in the code and it really helps us. And then another thing that is commonly overlooked in robotics is your notebook. Your notebook is a very important part to the robot and it will just overall help you so much in competitions. Well, looking forward to a big performance here out of 13358C. Doing well so far, so we wish you best of luck at this event. And uh, good luck, and thanks for telling us about your role. I think there's a lot of great things we can learn thanks from it, so I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.